E-commerce expansion myths blasted. Successful cross-border expansion help. Listen to the show to hear how one UK company is helping e-commerce sellers successfully expand into Europe and double their profits. Hosted by Andy Hooper of Global E-commerce Experts. Good evening, good morning, good day. Welcome to Global E-commerce Experts. Uh, welcome to the GE podcast. We're very excited today to be joined by Kitty Lai from MeBrand. Kitty, uh, hello. Thanks for joining us. Hello, Ricky. And thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm really excited to be here today. Very cool. Yeah. So um, for those people who have been have listened in the past to our uh, podcasts, we, we, like to, we like to include uh, testimonial and background to experienced e-com sellers and people that have had a really deep impact on other sellers within the market. So let's, you're, you're one of those people, Kitty. Congratulations. Let's, <laughs> let's kick off by getting uh, to know a little bit more about, about you. Uh, how did you get where you are and uh, what experience do you have in the e-commerce space? Yeah, so um, this goes way back um, 20 odd years, but I've always had um, a passion for packaging and design. And my first summer job um, was actually working for a packaging company um, for Estee Lauder Clinique and Aramis. And I was working on the factory line. So I was looking, um, I was involved on actually being on the convey about putting together boxes, packaging, stickers, everything to do with a packaging that leads all the way from the line all the way till it's packed into a box. And that sort of gave me a sort of a really um, a big curiosity about packaging. And I really loved it. So um, from then on, I worked there quite a few summers. I was 15. As soon as I got my national insurance card, I was working there at 15. And then I got that card now, that little, the little, the, that, that little card. That little red, blue card. Yeah, the red, red and blue and white card. <laughs> That's the, the one. They're, yeah, They're a rarity now. They are a rarity. Um, but yeah, so I was there, for, you know, 15. And then I loved design and art and I was pretty good at it. But I, I but there wasn't much graphic design back then. And I kind of um, sort of transitioned into um, wanting to go into graphic design because back in the early 1990s, there wasn't a lot about graphic design and I didn't know anything about it. And I thought, well, where are people make, you know, designing these boxes and these bags and, you know, these designs. And I really wanted to get into it. So I did... Um, a degree in graph, um, brand communication and I um, specialized into graphic design so brand communication was set up into four modules photography illustration time-based media which is now a video and graphic design and I specialized in graphic design and then came out graduating in 1997 into the world the scary world of London um, and I worked for graphic design agencies um, for a year um, and then a job came up for Ted Baker. So this was a fashion retail brand in the UK that was growing. And um, I really wanted the position um, to be junior designer. I wanted to be in-house and working for a fashion brand. And I got the job um, and worked my way up for 10 years to manage the design team of design team of eight designers and um, opening stores globally with the marketing team. So everything with packaging, um, the bags, the boxes, the swing tickets, the, even the like the zip pulls with the name Ted Baker on, I would sign that off um, through the, my department. But I would ba would have um, an insight on all the departments. So I would work with the shipping, the product designers, the merchandise team, the wholesalers, every department within a that works on every cog of a fashion design business I yes. was involved because they needed my help so internal graphic designs and externals so all the marketing campaigns all the window displays everything would come through my department so I got a, a really I it was literally hands-on so I I, I don't know, you know, after that, and not many companies work like that, that, but I got the experience that I needed and working closely with suppliers and printers. So for me, I understand substrates as well. So print techniques, um, materials and creating things from scratch um, and then just um, actually launching it into a, into a business. So um, there for 10 years and then I left, um, made redundant 2008 and then worked with TK Maxx for a while, um, freelancing, and then Kath Kidston came along. So they were looking for a packaging designer to work closely with Kath Kidston. They needed to rebrand everything, which I helped her in 2012. 
So I joined in 2010 and left in 2016. And there's a reason, um, there's a whole transition and I'm getting to where this e-commerce space, which really interests me at the moment. And so with Kath Kidston, I, in between I had my son and then obviously um, three years on, I, I went back um, three days a week. Uh, I didn't want to manage a team anymore. Doing something for the last 15, 15, 16 years, I got a bit bored. So it's like, I'm not learning anything. I'm just passing all my knowledge to my team. Um, but that, what am I getting back? So I just felt like I'm working on seasons over and over and over, over. Um, so then I was made redundant because I didn't want to work up to a four day week. And, you know, um, I decided actually my time is up. And this is the crunch was like, what do I do next? So I was given the opportunity. Actually, my brother in law actually told me about it. Amazon FBA course. So I did a masterclass over a weekend um, learning how to sell on Amazon um, in 2016. All in a weekend? Yeah, it was a three-day masterclass. My hand was up the whole weekend with questions because I thought, wow. <laughs> one you know, of those I, people, yeah. I'm one of those. I lost my voice. We do by... those masterclass. We do those masterclasses and there's often people very yeah. much like Kitty. Yeah, I did. I it, I lost my voice by day three. I couldn't ask any more questions <laughs> on day three. So I was just one of those. Um, yeah. yeah. And then I, I wanted to launch a product um, within four months. I joined their um, uh, their mastermind, uh, one year um, academy. In, within six months, they made me a, a mentor, actually, within the academy. So I was passing my knowledge on to the mentees at, um, round table discussions so that was really great because obviously the amount of knowledge that I have in terms of creating brands um, design and packaging um, so that's where my sort of whole foot got into the door with the e-commerce space whilst also having that knowledge working for other brands like um, Ted Baker and Kakissa because we had online space as well I was involved with e-commerce departments so you know launching my own product on Amazon um, and then going back to the design space because I lost the laugh then I kind of loved I sort of missed it and because I was getting a lot of referrals and people asking me to design for them and so I thought actually why not I'll make a business of that and so you know me brand um, transitioned from a personal branding um, company to um, where it is now so I help businesses um, to and, and e-commerce sellers to create and elevate their brands Wow. So I've got a question, Kitty. Yeah. Um, I haven't got, I'm not wearing anything, Kath, Kath Kidson, but, and our <laughs> podcast listeners can't see this, but if you're watching it on video at any point on YouTube, did you sign off my Ted Baker buttons? Because I, I just simply did. love them. Yeah, I probably did because all the artwork comes through me and I would have made sure that that artwork is signed off and done. So yeah. I'm, I'm actually wearing your handiwork. So that's, uh, yes. that's a delight. <laughs> Uh, well, that was so that. That's that's quite a story, and you know the, the brands that you've been working with are very, well, certainly from a British perspective. Perhaps yes. not for American listeners, but from a British perspective, you can't fail to have had um, some kind of impact on those. Whether that's high street to owning to you know, uh, you know to be, being some have some kind of absorption to those products. So you've really touched a lot of people's lives, haven't you? I have. And it's it's great when I actually sometimes stand in like in the street or see someone walk by. That's mine. I did that. Or in the yeah. store. I did that. I or like, and it's, it's great. It's a great feeling. And to know that people love these brands. And for me, it's making things look great. And I can still do that with my skill set that I have now. So with me, me brand, I help people transition a brand that they're stuck on or a logo or you know they're not really sure where which direction to go with um so then i will help them so i, I work as a consultant um designer as well so you know it's it's what i'm passionate about well before we touch on the consultative side of things let's talk a bit about your own brand i guess that was after you did your amazon masterclass this yes. is kit uh, tell us a bit about that that when, what went well there what what, what, were the big, what were the big challenges that you had to overcome and how Right. So with Kit London, this was a new this is not on the Amazon space. So my first FBA was actually an organic baby brand. Um, but Kit London was something that um, we actually launched last year, um, just before Black Friday, um, <laughs> but not intentionally. But it was something that was in the making from 2018. I, my business partner, Chris Brown, um, was also the global direct, retail director at Ted Baker. So he's actually my business partner for Kit London. We're both co-founders and we 
created um, Kit London over lockdown, just literally before it happened in 2020, we formed a company and everything. And I thought, oh no, um, let's just roll with it. Um, so we had a big hurdle of that, working with suppliers, trying to get things done with the designers as well, um, over lockdown and self social distancing. We're trying to sort of look at samples and things and it was just cr a crazy time. So that literally sort of stretched over our, our timeline where we actually wanted to launch um, in, 2021 summer um but because of lockdowns factories in turkey in hong kong or wherever you know they were all everything was delayed shipping shipping you know was a nightmare as crazy well. at that point wasn't it crazy shipping was crazy uh, the pricing absolutely. the logistics was a nightmare yeah and we just thought oh all our summer stock was launching in autumn and then it's black friday you know what do we do yeah. so our so our strategy was to um treat it as a relaunch in january this year so we are still a relatively new brand. Um, there's still lots of hurdles um, as a growing brand. Um, so there's lots of things we still have to sort of work on as well. But, you know, I think um, overcoming the the whole COVID thing, the suppliers, and also being such a small brand, you're having to work with large quantities when it comes to fashion. Our Kit London is a sustainable fashion brand. We um, produce timeless classics. So we're not we're slow fashion. We're not fast fashion. Um, but yeah, so there's lots of things to overcome and trying to get that message across, especially being online. And I know a lot of online sellers or e-commerce sellers listening will find that struggle. How do we get seen? How do we get heard? We've just launched. What do we do? So we're in the same position um, and it's a lot to do with the marketing. There's a lot of PR to do. There's lots of things to be doing and spending a hell of a lot on Facebook ads or um, other social media ads. <laughs> so yeah, so there's lots of things that's still in, in motion. So the first year we just won't see a profit. We are just going with it. Well, I mean, some of those some of those hurdles weren't so much hurdles than enormous brick walls, you know, the, <laughs> the, the, the COVID or the, the pandemic um, uh, barrier that I mean wow haven't you done an incredible an incredibly uh, incredible job just to have come out of the end of this of survived that I guess it's the the mixture of different strings to your bow as it were of the different things that you were doing um but yeah I mean um I think you're being hard on yourself to call it a relaunch really it's the it's just an extended an extended launch, extended launch. <laughs> yeah that, that was the, the october last year was like a soft launch this is like and then this year was the hard launch <laughs> yeah and it, I, I literally the begin uh, before i joined the podcast here kitty i literally just got off a consultancy call with a client who is in the states who's make who's selling uh, a real journey of of a bespoke handmade shoes and jewelry and artwork and things like that which they're sourcing from different artisans around the world and literally the things that you're explaining here the journeys and the things that you've been going through exactly the same you know when it comes to something like uh kit global um what's what what are the what are the new, what's the strategy to to, to feed, you know to, to grow your online sales that what you were talking about that getting the message across what are you going to do to get your message off without giving away too many tricks no, I mean, I think, you know, for us, for Kit London, we are, we've joined up with other marketplaces. So other third party marketplace platforms, just like Amazon, um, we're a bit more boutique. So we've joined with Wolf and Badger, Atelier, Super Etage, and they have a much more bigger audience than what we would on just on on our own Shopify website. So we have to join with them and the exposure has been great. Um, Wolf and Badger itself has a standalone store in um, in London, also in US as well. There's a couple of stores there. Um, but, you know, having our physical our products physically in the store has really helped sales as well. So people can actually touch and feel the quality because it's actually really good quality. But when you online, you cannot see that until you actually order it. So being on another marketplace, they can help you promote. Um, we've currently got a flash sale on with them at the moment. So, you know, the sales have just been ticking over today. It was great. And, you know, you're seeing more sales than you would do on your website had you not been on a third party marketplace. Also partnerships. So partnerships with like minded um companies and businesses we also um uh, give back one percent to the planet so we're members of that um one percent of the planet so we support oceans and forests as well so we support charities so there's another channel that we can sort of open up 
to a different audience as well with our brand. And also um, PR is something that we need to look at much more this year as well. So um, going with PR, whether you want to go influencers and stuff, we're still looking at our budgets and seeing what do we need to do and, and finding the right type of influencers as well for our product. There's a real story, isn't there, behind um, what you're selling? Because it's not just, you know, if you're if you're not fast fashion, where you're kind of, you're on the spiral, the downward spiral of to the journey to the bottom in terms of price, you, you've got that there's more to it there in terms of the products that you're selecting and the, you know, the quality and the, and how they're made and that kind of stuff. So it's, you know, using marketplaces, it is a challenge to get that whole story piece across. Let's touch a little bit on the sustainability side of things, because as you mentioned, you know, the 1% um, is important to your business model. And that's the same for global e-commerce experts. We spend uh, a huge amount on um, ad adapting our processes to try and make the supply chain more sustainable. E-commerce as a standalone word or an ecosystem, let's call it, mm -hmm. is is horribly inefficient when it comes to sustainability. There's so much waste, there's so much um, disposal, there's so many returns, there's so much energy being dispelled. Um, and every little piece helps, we're all doing our piece. W what steps are you guys doing? How, are you, how have you uh, added sustainability, not just in terms of that 1%, but mm. you know, for the, from the whole, uh, the, the whole circle? Yeah, so for me, sustainability was all always sort of a big thing. Like working with brands like Ted Baker, I was I was like do, doing that before it was even a word. You know, like recently, I was doing that like 15 years ago, like making sure everything was environmentally friendly, um, things were recyclable or recycle. You know, you could recycle it. Um, with Kit London, um, we're a paperless. I say paperless brand. Uh, we don't use paper. At, in any way or shape or form everything's on online on a google drive somewhere or, or on a server um and when you do res returns there's no paper in your packaging um so everything's click then it's just literally sorted out with the um return center but packaging materials are is really important as well. So everything I've used um I've used suppliers that um are using um recycled um cards um and also the biodegradable poly bags we use um, are obviously important to me. Um, and then also um, the swing tickets are FSC accredited. So the, the papers that we use and, you know, everything we're, we're doing is, is to be recycled or recyclable. So all our boxes that we send out. So there's there's nothing we can do because we're an online business. We have to still send our product in in something. Um, so our recycled boxes um, are, are returnable as well. So we have an additional strip, adhesive strip that the Customers can reuse the box and send it back as well. Okay. So there's lots of things we're doing that way um, to make sure that all the packaging is recyclable. Um, it, and that goes through to some of our product as well. We're not 100% with all our products, but most of them, like they they are like um, Eco Vero um, Viscose. So they are accredited kind of um, materials that we're using for the product. Um, for me, in an ideal world, everything in Kit, Kit London would be made from a eco or recyclable or organic kind of source um, to make our product. And also, I want to bring that all back into UK where possible at some point. I do want to produce and manufacture back into the UK as well. So the carbon footprint is much lower. Um, and in terms of the, the, the suppliers that we use and manufacturers, uh, we do vet them. And we do make sure that they have got their um, accreditations. We do make sure they are following things sustainably. Um, so um, we have to make sure that that's, you know, it, it works well with us as well as, as a business. Um, so, yeah. It sounds like we need to have another conversation after this podcast surrounding the, you know, the, the back end part of the logistics process, the final miles, this mm. carbon neutral uh, from a, the final mile on that piece of the logistics process of, uh, of you know storing and fulfilling and adding in um some a little bit of consciousness on on that point as well because the journey from manufacturer to arrival with the um uh, arrival with the end user mm. there's there's different stakeholders who are responsible aren't there are they through the course of that so it's um yeah. it's an interesting point of the chain um well let's talk a bit about marketing you're clearly, um, you're clearly a well-proven marketeer. Um, <laughs> marketing to the right audience, of course, is a key factor. And you, you know, you, you've got your own design packaging company. You've uh, packaged and marketed for some of the 
um, the, 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 some very high-end brands, um, as well as for e-commerce. Tell us a bit more about this. What recommendations have you got for sellers, people setting up an existing businesses? Um, recommendations for sellers that are setting up their businesses, I would say um, be really realistic about your budget. So really do set aside a budget because I have a lot of um, sellers, online sellers coming to me and wanting design. They want a packaging designed here and they want to do this. And it's like, well, what is your budget? Do you actually have a budget for the design side? Do you have a budget for actually producing the packaging itself as well? And a lot of them don't actually think about that. It's almost like an afterthought. You know, they got the product as like, let's get it packaged now and let's get it done. And they don't really consider the design a very important part of it. And it is because that's the first thing that your customer will see is the design on the packaging, what type of packaging it is as well. And, you know, if you don't get that piece right, people are not going to even look at it. They're going to go, oh, I'm going to go on to the next one. Same product, nicer design. Um, it's about how you represent your brand. So a lot of sellers need to make sure that the, that the way the brand looks and how it's represented is important. And when I say realistic as well, you know, people are thinking, oh, I'm just going to go to Fiverr.com. Nothing wrong with Fiverr.com, but, you know, they'll find a designer, design this uh, logo for them, and then they'll get them to do the packaging. But I do want to sort of warn some sellers is that not every graphic designer is a packaging designer. Mm. So not every packaging designer will know how to put artwork onto a template or necessarily know what might things might work on a wraparound things they can lay things out yes absolutely they might just be an art worker but they might not know a bit beyond that and for what I do with my clients is that I tell them that's not gonna work and I already know because I've been doing it for the last 20 20 plus years um it's not gonna work and I will understand templates and um, die cuts and what's going to happen with you have a fold there no no that can't work and so it's really important that when you hire a graphic designer don't think that they are a packaging designer just do do your research and just maybe question them before you start a project with them because then you might find yourself actually they don't really know what they're doing and it's clear because obviously with my peers that I have in the business they've employed designers to be packaging designer and once they get into work they have no clue they have no clue and then you're sort of trying to fix what you know that they're meant to have knowledge about because they said they're a packaging designer but they're not so that's one of the tips i would sort of um, um i would recommend is really sort of do your research um and so <laughs> yeah so i think that's really important wow I, it, well, i'm sure that i'm sure that you, the, when you were running that team before you decided that you didn't want to it was a formidable task uh <laughs> making sure that you were up to scratch up to kitty scratch it on the uh on the packaging on the packaging front i mean clearly you're a great advocate for personal branding um and i could see you know researching and looking at your uh, your websites um before uh, before we talked here uh, how, how did you build your own personal brand and how's that impacted the kit side of things so building a personal brand is just something that i really needed to do before i even before i even wanted to um build my me brand um business it was actually personal branding i wanted to build my own so i actually created a facebook group about personal branding um just to give myself exposure so the first thing i really needed to work on is mindset my mindset it was was to actually I need to do it get out of my comfort zone because this is not my natural this was never my natural self five years ago so to be on the screen talking to you on podcast oh my god that would be like a nightmare um even to think about owning my own business was a nightmare I, I was just like oh I couldn't do it but you know the FBA course taught me how to build a business so that was great because I didn't know but mindset is really important to build my um my personal brand and then the exposure so the visibility was the the crux of creating opportunities for me and I really wanted to um the one thing I really wanted to do was to speak on a cruise ship on an online sellers cruise um back in 2020 just literally before lock, um, the, the COVID happened and I really wanted to do that and I literally just went to the host and say can I come on your show and he said, well, who are you? Well, I met him actually back in Miami a long uh, a, a year ago. But I, I thought, well, I, I'm going to wing it and see if he'll have me as a speaker. 
so we had a conversation I told him my background I told him what you know and he thought well, yeah great and I, I did the talk back in 2020 um, I was back this year actually January again and I'm going to be back again next year but that was to get me out of my comfort zone I didn't really want to do it I, I did but I didn't you know but that was the, the thing that pushed me and then that's got easier and easier and easier and actually being on a screen doing lives with my Facebook group I decided I'm going to bring guests on I'll bring experts onto my show um, like you're doing on your show here and you know that's just giving me experience just to keep doing it and get going and going and that's where I'm building my personal brand still it never stops it, I'm still no, going stop. yeah. <laughs> fantastic um so that's given us quite a lot of insight there Kitty thank you I mean <laughs> what where um you've had uh, a whirlwind life from a career perspective and you're that you're now master of your own destiny. Um, what's next for you? More visibility, actually. I feel like um, with Kit London, I've been so in the business and I've sort of put me brand to a side a little bit. And I've kind of come back this this summer, actually, um, with me brand more. And that's great. That's helped me with my business, actually, creating more visibility. And so next year is all about working with more online sellers actually so that's my my passion to get everyone's um packaging and branding looking amazing so it's just, I'm just gonna fill the world with like kitty designs everywhere um, <laughs> um but yeah so for me that that is one of the things it's more visibility and continue building my brand and also I want to be award-winning at some point so watch this space fantastic and uh, if if, uh, if anyone's listening to this that's inspired that wants some help with their brand where can they find you they can find me at mebrandglobal.com or um, kittylie.brand on Instagram. So I am everywhere. Just put Kitty Lie brand and you'll find me on LinkedIn, Instagram or my website. And if they want to buy uh, clothes with a difference, where would they go for that? They would go to kit-london.com. Fantastic. And uh, likewise, from a sustainable uh, side of fulfillment and uh, logistics, global e-commerce experts are uh, both organic you mentioned about your first FBA uh, organic brand earlier on uh, we have we're organic uh, organic certified and organic exporters and uh, have a highly sustainable um, version of uh, logistics and supply chain that just about wraps things up Kitty thank you so much inspirational to talk to you and listen to your story and how and your mindset uh, absolutely amazing I'm sure uh, people listening to this podcast uh, through the future will have enjoyed this. Uh, please do stay in touch, uh, get to link up on our social media channels, and otherwise we'll look forward to you uh, presenting you another, web, uh, another webinar and podcast in the very near future. Kitty, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a blast and you know it's been really great to be on your show, thank you. No problem, and thanks for listening. Speak to you next time. E-commerce expansion myths blasted. Successful cross-border expansion help. Listen to the show to hear how one UK company is helping e-commerce sellers successfully expand into Europe and double their profits. Hosted by Andy Hooper of Global E-commerce e experts. experts.